Well, good evening, good evening, pro wrestling fans from all around the world of all shapes and sizes. Welcome to another pro wrestling talk video brought to you by Blitzball Champ Gaming here on the U to the Tube. I am your host, Blitzball Champ Jason Ingram. So, I finally got around to watching WWE Elimination Chamber Perth in its entirety. So I wanted to get on here and give a quick review of the event. This event took place February 24th, this past Saturday. This was at the Optus Stadium in Perth, Western Australia, Australia. Uh, there were five total matches, and they had one segment, which I'll only talk about a little bit of it. But overall, only five total matches. One of them was a kickoff match. So... Let's go ahead and jump into those. Um, and there were three, three of them were title matches as well. So we had three title matches. So let's go ahead, let me get my graphics up and let's get started with our kickoff match. Check it out. So the kickoff match was for the WWE Women's Tag Team Championships. As the champs, the Kabuki Warriors, of course, it's Asuka and Kairi Sane, put the titles on the line against Candice LeRae and Australia's impressive Indy Hartwell. And, of course, quite the reception for Indy Hartwell back in her home country of Australia, which I believe she was born in Melbourne, Australia, so... Uh, she got quite the reception. Um, overall, decent match. Uh, I felt like the crowd was definitely hot for Indy Hartwell whenever she wrestled. So there was some good consistency there. And, you know, just Kabuki Warriors looking great as heels. Definitely doing a lot of great heel work, especially in this second title reign of theirs and ever since joining damage control and kind of being the last one standing in dam damage control. But overall, this match was pretty decent. Um, I definitely felt like Indy Hartwell was showcased pretty well in her home country. But let's keep it real. There was no way that they were going to defeat the Kabuki Warriors, especially not in the kickoff, which it would have been nice if this was added to the main card, but it is what it is. But Kyrie Sane was able to pick up the victory for the Kabuki Warriors when she covered Candice LeRae for the 1-2-3 after she suffered the reverse DDT insane elbow combo. Which, I wonder, if have they even come up with a name for that, that double team finisher? I don't think they have. I don't think they have. So it'll be interesting to see if they come up with a finisher name for that combo. But... Reverse DDT, insane elbow drop combo, puts away Candice LeRae. Kabuki Warriors, still your WWE Women's Tag Team Champions. Okay. Oh. Before we go into the main card, just want to remind everybody to be sure, don't forget to check out the link in the description for Game Beauty for some awesome video game makeup and cosmetic products. And don't forget to use the promo code for 10% off of your order. Blitzball underscore champ, all in caps. So, happy shopping. All right, let's go into the main card. All right, so we started off the main card with the first of two Elimination Chamber matches. Starting off with the women. Liv Morgan... Raquel Rodriguez, Naomi, the man Becky Lynch, Bianca Belair, and Tiffany Stratton. Now, for this match, uh, Naomi and Becky Lynch started off this match while the other four ladies started off in their respective uh, chamber pods. 
Um, I felt like the pace was a little slow starting off between uh, Becky and Naomi, which, I mean, it's been a hot minute since those two have even faced each other in a wrestling match. So, um, at least from my understanding. But I felt like the pacing was a little slow to start off with. But I think gradually, once the other ladies started joining the match out from out of their pods, I felt like it definitely got better. Definitely got better. So, just to let you know the order of when the pods opened. So, we started off with Naomi and Becky Lynch. Then Tiffany Stratton. Then her pod opened. Then Liv Morgan. Then Raquel Rodriguez. And then Bianca Belair. She, hers was the last pod to open. Um... Now, I've never really been a fan of Tiffany Stratton. Of course, y'all know I call her the Bimbo Barbie. But I have to say, she looked really good in this match, really showcasing her athletic ability. Um, the swanton that she did off the top of one of the pods, awesome. And just, you know, she's become quite the high flyer. I got I to gotta give it up to her. You know, I, I don't like the gimmick, but I got to admire her in-ring ability so and of course you know she's a former NXT women's champion so I gotta give credit I gotta give credit where credit's due and she was definitely showcased well in this match uh, same thing with uh, Bianca Belair and Liv Morgan I mean really all of these ladies look great all of these ladies look great there are a lot of really cool spots the the flying senton off the top of the chamber onto, um, I believe it was onto Raquel from Liv Morgan. That was a sick spot. That was a really sick spot. Like, that was probably one of my favorite spots from that match, next to the, of course, the Tiffany Stratton Swanton. But that was a killer spot. I really like that. But yeah, just all these ladies showcase really well. Um, Naomi looked great. In this match, uh, doing the um, split leg, it, uh, split leg drop off the um, off the side of the cage. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, some pretty good spots in this match overall. <coughs> but let's go over the order of eliminations. So, actually, the first elimination took place before everybody got in. As a matter of fact. Naomi, unfortunately, was the first to be eliminated as she got uh, rolled up by Tiffany Stratton. So Tiffany Stratton pinned Naomi to eliminate her. So she was eliminated first. And then Raquel Rodriguez and Bianca Belair were the final two to, to enter um, the match from their chambers. Then Liv Morgan actually pinned Tiffany Stratton after she hit her with the oblivion off the turnbuckle. She usually does that off the uh, off the middle rope, but that time she did it off the turnbuckle. But she hit Tiffany with uh, oblivion, pinned her for the one, two, three. Tiffany's out. Then Bianca Belair pinned Raquel Rodriguez after hitting her with a KOD. So out goes Raquel. And then Surprisingly, I did not expect this to happen, but quite a quick finale sequence to this match. But Liv Morgan was able to roll up Bianca Belair with a schoolgirl, pin her for the one, two, three, eliminate her. So that's two eliminations for Liv Morgan. But then immediately after that, Becky Lynch hits Liv with a, with a manhandle slam out of nowhere, then pins her for the one, two, three. And the man, Becky Lynch, wins Elimination Chamber for the women, and she will go on to WrestleMania. So, congratulations to Becky Lynch, picking up the victory. Uh, not, sh not shocked at all. She was actually my pick to win, and it makes the most sense, especially once I get into the, the main event. But, overall, pretty enjoyable match. Like I said, the beginning... Started off a little slow. Not to mention, it felt like it took forever before 
they opened that first pot. Like, I don't know. It, it just felt like it was like 10 minutes into the match before they finally opened that first pot. But I don't know. Maybe it was just me, but it, it, it just it took forever. But um, shout out to Liv Morgan getting two of the eliminations in this match. I thought that was thought that was pretty interesting. I didn't expect her to get two eliminations. Um, so yeah, she got two. Bianca got one. Tiffany got one, and Becky got one. But of course, Becky got the one uh, when it mattered the most. So, but yeah, Becky Lynch, your winner. All right, let's go into this next match, um, our second title match. We had the undisputed WWE Tag Team Championships on the line. As the champions, the Judgment Day of Finn Balor and Damian Priest, defending against the New Catch Republic, made up of the Bruiserweight Pete Dunne and the big strong boy Tyler Bate. To be honest with you, this was actually my favorite match of the whole card. This match was solid from start to finish. Um, interesting name for uh, Pete Dunn and Tyler Bate. New Catch Republic. Very interesting name. Um, but love this, this tag match. Of course, Dom got booed like crazy to start uh, before the match in a very ginormous, fit, what, 50,000 in attendance crowd in Perth, and he just got booed the entire time he was trying to speak. Um, he had a little bit of interference from him, a little bit during this match, but otherwise this was a solid, solid tag title match between both these teams. Uh, Dom did uh, later on get ejected from the match. And, you know, I liked that it didn't, like, end instantly afterwards. They still kept going for a good amount of time. Like I said, both these teams went back and forth. And New Catch Republic looked really strong in this match. And, like I said, it really could have gone either way. And, you know, Finn Balor, Damian Priest, they have been a, they have been a solid tag team. They've been a very solid tag team. And, you know, the match was just stacked with great talent. Um, I've always enjoyed Tyler Bate and Pete Dunn. Um, the only person missing is Trent Seven because I, I love me some British strong style. But overall, this was a solid match. My favorite match of the whole card. Um... New Catch Republic came very, very close to winning this match. I mean, that double team burning hammer was really cool. Um, and just the action was just kept me on the edge of my seat. But after Damian Priest took both Dunn and Bate off with an am excuse me with an avalanche south of heaven choke slam double south of heaven choke slams off the turnbuckle put them put them both down Finn Balor finished off Pete Dunn with a coup de gras then pinned him for the one two three judgment day still your WWE or undisputed WWE tag team champions um the only thing now is, I mean, with them winning, <clears throat> with them retaining, the only thing that I can think of now is they'll probably lose those titles at WrestleMania, and then after they lose the titles, that's probably when Damian Priest is going to cash, whether it's on night one or on night two. But I think it's safe to say Damien is going to cash, cash in his money in the bank. Whether it's a failed cash-in or a successful cash-in, he's going to cash in at WrestleMania. I think the writing's on the wall now. Whether it's night one or night two, I, th I think he's going to cash in. I think he's definitely going to cash in. 
it's probably, honestly, it probably may even happen once Cody dethrones Roman. Maybe that's when he cashes in. Or he might cash in on whoever wins between Seth Rollins and the winner of the men's elimination chamber. There's options. There's options. All right. And like I said, they, they had the, the Grayson Waller effect segment, which, you know, they had Grayson Waller, they had Austin Theory, they had Seth freaking Rollins, they had Cody Rhodes. Honestly, I mean, I wasn't really that into it, but the only thing that really stuck out is Cody Rhodes challenging The Rock to a match anytime, anywhere, any place, all of that. So, we'll have to see what happens, but he has called out and challenged The Rock to a match. So... All that's fine and dandy, and then Austin Theory, Grayson Waller gets dropped and all that, and yeah, just, it wasn't a segment that I was really into, but what was important got said, and that's all I really cared about. Anyway, moving on. All right, on to the men's Elimination Chamber match. We had Kevin Owens, Bobby Lashley, Randy Orton, Drew McIntyre, Logan Paul, and L.A. Knight. Um, for the most part, this was this was all right. Um, it was funny seeing Kevin o Owens get get rowdy and just start raging inside of the chamber pod. I know when Logan Paul went and taunted him, he kept banging his head on the plexiglass. I'm like, geez, dude. <laughs> uh, oh, excuse me, had the hiccups. But you know what? That's that's Kevin Owens. That's Kevin Owens for you. So can't really be surprised at that. Now for this match, Drew McIntyre and L.A. Knight started this match off. So was kind of surprised there. Was kind of surprised. Um, but yeah, they started off this match and actually everybody got into the, to the match before the first elimination. So the order of appearance, so Drew McIntyre, LA Knight started off, then Kevin Owens entered and then Bobby Lashley, then Randy Orton and actually Logan Paul was the, was the last one, um, to enter the match from the, from the chamber pod. So. Um, and it got pretty destructive, which Bobby Lashley was spearing the mess out of people through chamber pods. I mean, he gave a devastating one to Logan Paul through a chamber pod. Kevin Owens, as soon as he had the chance, he locked himself into a pod with Logan Paul, started beating him down inside the pod. <clears throat> um... RKO's out of nowhere, BFT's here, BFT's there, just all over the place, all over the place. Um, but it was pretty, it was pretty brutal, very destructive match. But order of eliminations. So, actually, as shocking as it is. Bobby Lashley was the first one to get eliminated. I did not expect that. Did not expect that at all. But Drew McIntyre eliminated Bobby Lashley, pinned him for the 1-2-3 after hitting a Claymore, which he also hit, hit him with a Claymore outside of the ring on the metal grating. Um, and then Drew McIntyre pinned LA Knight for the 1-2-3 after AJ Styles got into the ring and just started beating down L.A. Knight with a chair, just like a steel chair onslaught on L.A. Knight to the point where he was down and out. Drew McIntyre made the cover. L.A. Knight eliminated. And then the other two eliminations actually came from Randy Orton. Eliminated Kevin Owens with an RKO. 
and then eliminated Logan Paul with an RKO. Now, of course, Logan Paul had the brass knucks ready, looking like he was about to use them, and then just bam, RKO out of nowhere. But Randy Orton pinned Kevin Owens and pinned Logan Paul both times after RKOs. So it came down to Drew McIntyre and Randy Orton as the final two competitors. They were the final two. And while it looked like Randy Orton was getting ready to win, he hit Drew McIntyre with an RKO. And then all of a sudden, back comes Logan Paul, punches Randy Orton with the brass knucks, knocks him out. And then Drew, <clears throat> and then Drew covers him for the one, two, three. Drew McIntyre wins the men's elimination chamber. Now, first I'll say this. I'm not surprised that Drew won. I actually picked Drew to win. But I think it's kind of a bummer how he got three eliminations and two of them, all he had to do was just make the cover. Like, it's kind of lame. It's kind of lame. You know, one person who wasn't even in the match, and then the other person who was in the match got eliminated and came back in, had to do the dirty, the dirty work, and then Drew capitalized. It's kind of lame. This is Drew McIntyre we're talking about here. He doesn't necessarily need that. So, it's kind of lame. Just, like I said... I knew he was going to win. That was the right choice for him to win. But how it happened, not a fan of. But the only thing that I take this as is that I guess this is going to set up... <clears throat> excuse me. I guess this is going to set up, perhaps, AJ Styles versus LA Knight at WrestleMania and Logan Paul versus Randy Orton at WrestleMania. That's what I assume this is going to lead to which i mean you get two nights of wrestlemania so there'll be plenty of matches between both nights so i can see how that, how that is i can see how that is who knows they might do a triple threat maybe kevin owens logan paul randy orton u.s title on the line perhaps they may do that but we shall see And then the main event of Elimination Chamber in Perth. Ah, uh, yes. The WWE Women's World Championship on the line. As the champion, Rhea Ripley, Australia's own Rhea Bloody Ripley, defends the title against Nia Jax. <clears throat> First off, I want to say congratulations to Rhea Ripley just on the opportunity. I mean, who all can say that they've gotten a chance to main event a pay-per-view or PLE in your home country? Like, that's, that's a big deal. That is a big deal. Especially... Main event, PLE, 50,000 in atten attendance, like <clears throat> 50,000 in attendance in your home country. That's, that's amazing. So shout out to Rhea Ripley just on having that opportunity. And of course, the crowd was on her side the entire time, got quite the reception. Crowd was loud. Match, you know what? I'll say this. This was probably one of Nia Jax's best matches in her entire WWE career. Yeah. And you know, she actually did some different things that we usually don't see her do. I mean, did a torture rack, did a stretch muffler. She even tried to get on, onto the top rope. And, you know, she did a she did a couple of things. It wasn't just the same shoving Rhea off the same leg drops over and over. She actually did a couple of different things. So, you know what? 
I gotta give, and, and like I said, I get it. I know Nia Jax is not a lot of people's favorites. I know she's not a favorite of mine. I get it. There's a lot of history behind Nia Jax and a lot of her shortcomings. I get it. But you know what? I'm going to give her a little bit of credit. I have to say this was probably one of her best, if not her best match in her WWE career. I, I'll give her that. I'll give her that. And, you know, oh, and shout out to the crowd on the, on the My Hole chance. That, that was pretty funny when she did the, when she missed the, uh, the hip drop. That was, that was pretty funny. But, you know what, both these ladies, they did a great job in the main event. Um, but of course, this match was all Rhea's to win. Um, beautiful superplex off the top turnbuckle, then... Hits a riptide, and kudos to Rhea on kicking out of the uh, of the annihilator. She did get hit with the annihilator. She kicked out of it, so that was cool. Ended up finishing off uh, Nia with a riptide, and also kudos on her being able to keep her held up in the electric chair. I thought she was going to drop her back, but she dropped her forward toward the turnbuckle. Great strength there from Rhea Ripley, but. Hits Nia with the Riptide, one, two, three. Rhea Ripley still your WWE Women's World Champion. <clears throat> so, stage has been set. We know what we're getting at WrestleMania now. So we're going to get Seth Rollins defending the title versus Drew McIntyre. And we're going to get Rhea Ripley defending her title versus the mind Becky Lynch. So So yeah, we got we got a a number of title matches set so far. So the ones I just named, um we know we're going to get uh Bailey versus Io Sky uh championship match as well. Of course, Bailey won the the Women's Royal Rumble. Uh, we're going to get Cody versus Roman Reigns. You know, Cody run, won the Men's Royal Rumble. So, we got that. So, so yeah, both uh, main men and women's championship matches have been set. So, it'll be interesting to see what kind of, uh, of mid-card matches we get, tag team matches we get, you know. It'll be interesting to see what the rest of the WrestleMania card looks like. But now that Elimination Chamber is over, it's full speed ahead to WrestleMania. They got a they got a whole month. They got a whole month to really start building some things uh, to really finish off this road to WrestleMania as they get ready to go into Philly. <clears throat> now. I'll say this. I actually enjoyed an Elimination Chamber, Perth, more than I did Royal Rumble. Yeah, I actually enjoyed it more than Royal Rumble. I know that's not by a whole lot, but I was I was overall pretty pleased with Elimination Chamber and Perth over Royal Rumble. That's, that's just how I feel. That's just my opinion, how I feel. But anyway, that'll do it for this review. Like I said, there was only five matches on this on this PLE. And, you know, they had the one Grayson Waller effect segment, which I didn't really care that much for. But overall, I, I was pleased. I was pleased. But anyway... That'll do it for this review. Don't forget to check out Game Beauty. And let me know what y'all thought of Elimination Chamber and Perth. What did you think of the matches? How did you feel about the Elimination Chamber matches? Um, the title matches as well. Um, what did you like? What didn't you like? And now that that's over, what are you looking forward to with WrestleMania? Are you hyped for WrestleMania? Let me know how you're feeling. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell while you're at it. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. 
for another Pro Wrestling Talk brought to you by Blitzball Champ Gaming here on the U to the Tube. I'm your host, Blitzball Champ Jason Ingram. Hope everybody has a blessed week, and I will see y'all in the next video. Later.